Hi everybody. Happy Friday. It's Friday. We made it. Yay. Isn't that what Jimmy Fallon says? We made it. It's Friday. I haven't watched Jimmy in a long time. Can't stay up that late. Thanks for joining me. Let's make sure that I'm in the right place. Looks like it. Um, all right. So I hope you guys are doing good. I am recovered from my little bug that I had and I have been working like crazy. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this week is all about the Snowflake Showcase. Hi, Stacy. Uh, the, Snowflake so the Snowflake Showcase is a new uh, little offering of products from Stampin' Up. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. I've been talking about it all week. Um, and we're going to play with it today. We're going to do some some techniques on our cards. Nothing terribly complicated, but I think they're terribly beautiful. Um, I also am gonna run through a few things. I have some things to tell you guys. Um, and also, I'm a so afraid. I have so many things um, I wanna tell you. I meant to make a list and I didn't do it. Um, one thing I want to tell you, hi Lisa, is that um, next week I will be gone. I'll be out of town, I'm going to Florida for Stampin' Up's um, on stage. It's kind of what we, it's our convention um, that we have. It's the, a big celebration. It's Stampin' Up's 30th year, and it's a celebration of our end of year, our year ends at the end of September. So it's kind of our way to come together and celebrate the previous year. Um, so I'm going, I'm gonna be gone most of the week. Um, so there will be no Facebook Lives tomorrow. Um, I will probably post only a couple of times on my blog. Make sure, well, you guys are already all here on my group page. This is where I'll share anything that I can. I'm not sure in years past we haven't been able to share anything, but then suddenly um, this summer on the incentive trip we were able to share stuff. So who knows? Stay tuned. Right here is where you'll get information from me. Um, so there will be no lives next week. And then the week I, I come back Sunday, next Sunday, and then have five days to prepare for my huge retreat and retreat to go, um, which is if you have never prepared for a large event, let me tell you, it's insane. So um, I am making no promises about Facebook Live that week. I really want to do Facebook Live that week. That's the week before Thanksgiving. Um, because I will have stuff to share with you, um, but I just don't know how, what, I just don't know. <laughs> so we're gonna play it by ear in November, cause then it's Thanksgiving, right? So we're just gonna play it by ear. We're gonna see what I can get done here in the next few weeks. I love coming to you guys live, um, but it is quite a bit of um, work on my part on top of all these events and stuff. So we'll see, maybe it'll be a, um, shortened version or something. So just stay tuned. But definitely next week be looking for updates from Stampin' Ups on stage. Speaking of my retreat, you guys saw my post yesterday about prepping for 80 kits. Um, you can see over there I've got three out of the however many done. And you guys, 80 is a lot. I don't know. Whew, it just is a lot. Um, and a lot of you were asking about the kit. I want a kit, can I get a kit? Right now, I have capped it at what I think I can do, but I'm taking a um, wait list um, because I may have a few at the end. I always make extras, and then I'm reserving some spots at my local retreat for some people that may or may not come. So, if those free up, I will pull some people from that wait list and offer you the kit, okay? So if you're not on that list, and you wanna be on the wait list for the retreat to go, then message me and let me know. Give me your email address and I'll add you to the list. The retreat to go, I've been talking about it a bunch, but it has it sold out like that. Um, it has um, projects and a swag bag. All the projects are gonna be using the um, Festive Farmhouse bundle or suite of products. And it'll also have, I always do lots of little, what we call pillow gifts. Um, I sprinkle my, um, retreat attendees with little gifts throughout the, the time that they're there. So you get all of those in the box too. And my retreat bag is so cute this time. I think it's gonna be my favorite ever. I can't wait to splurge. It's a little bit of a, a splurge this time. Um, 
but I think it's going to be worth it. So if you want on that list, just message me and I'll add you to the list. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I see all of you saying hello. Um, okay, so retreat in the box. Okay, the other thing is the PDF. It is now available in my PDF store. If you go to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, at the top there are tabs, and there's one that says PDF store. You scroll down to Festive Farmhouse and you'll find it. There are seven projects in the PDF, okay? Um, I got so many questions on this picture yesterday when I posted uh, prepping for it um, that uh, I just wanted you guys to know that the PDF is available. I'm not gonna be posting the pictures or the tutorials because it's part of a class, um, but if you want them, the PDF is available in the store. Now, if you're on my team, be patient with me, you're getting it for free, I promise. The PDF is coming to you for free. I just have not had five seconds to actually upload it and do all that. So I promise if you're on my Sweet Stampede team, my downline gets all my PDFs for free. I don't know if you guys knew that. It's a huge perk for being on my team and they love it. Um, I see Patty, um, Patty had asked me this morning, yes, I promise it's coming. Um, you guys, thanks Janie, she likes it too. It's a, it's a fun perk, I think, that my downline get to get all those PDFs. If you add those, if I did three PDFs a month, that's $45 free in PDFs that, you, that they get a month just for being on my downline. Um, that's just a perk. And they also get my kits um, at heavily discounted. So if you're thinking about that starter kit, you guys, it's a great time to get it because now you get your 20% off all your holiday stuff that you need to order. And we have holiday extravaganza coming up at the end of the month. You know, Black Friday type sale Thanksgiving week. Stay tuned for that. If you are a demonstrator, you get your discount, your 20% on top of the sale prices. So being a demonstrator has a ton of perks. Okay, moving on. So retreat, that's the deal with retreat. Um, this morning, I forgot to post it here. I don't think I posted it. This morning, um, our PDF went, uh, our PDF tutorial for November went live. And I can't show you, but a lot of them use the Snowflake Showcase that we're gonna be using today. It is, let's see, is there a page that shows all the little sneak peeks? No, there's not. It's huge this month, like 77 pages. That's a ton. You get this free with a $50 purchase from me, an order in my online store, and I send them once a week. Be patient with me, please. If you didn't get yours, um, within about a week, email me. Sometimes I'm behind, and sometimes they go to spam. So, but anyway, that the PDF is free with a $50, minimum $50 order, um, or you can buy it in my PDF store if you're a demonstrator. And if you're on my team, you get that for free too. Okay, so there's that. Um, prizes, would you guys like to see who our prize winners are? Um, Stacy, at the very beginning, are you still here? Stacy Bian Bianchi, Bianchi, did I say it right? Stacy, you're the winner from Wednesday's Facebook Live. Hi, Gina. You're the winner from Wednesday's Facebook Live, Stacy, um, for sharing my video. Thank you so much. You were randomly drawn, so if you'll message me your mailing address, I'll get this in the mail to you before I leave for Orlando. Last week on Friday, I said I would be giving away two holiday paper shares, all the paper from the holiday catalog, and our two winners are Vicki Spicer and Dawn Hutchins. I think I have both of your mailing addresses, but if you're watching, ladies, please message me your address. It would just make it quicker for me to just be able to write it and not have to go searching for it, all right? Oh, uh, thanks, Amy. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you, too. It was fun. In case you guys didn't know, Stampin' Up! announced their uh, top achievers yesterday, and so all of us are just kind of on cloud nine uh, and just, I don't know, it's fun. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate it. Um, so Vicki and Dawn, sorry I was distracted. Please message me. This week, um, the prizes, I have two different little bundles of prizes and there's two ways you can win. You can share this video or you can go over to my blog, pinkbuckroo.com, scroll to the bottom of today's post and there's a little widget. Oh, uh, hi Dina. Yeah, you too. Hashtag superstar, that's you too. Um, you can scroll down to the bottom of my blog. There's a little raffle copter there and you just enter your information. Um, this week, I think I'm asking you for suggestions for Facebook Friday as we get closer to the holidays. I would love to know what you guys need, what you want. Um, that helps me kind of plan my projects. 
Um, and also, so that's one way in sharing the video. So two different prizes, they're similar. One has the Wishing You Well stamp set with some chicken wire elements and some holiday catalog ribbon, the ribbon share. And then the other prize is close, it's a different stamp set, Still Night, um, with that cute little owl, chicken wire elements and ribbon. Hi, Laurie, thank you, you're so sweet. Um, so share the video and you'll be entered to win and go over to the raff, raffle copter and you'll be able, you'll be entered to win. So you have two chances to win two prizes and I will announce them some point. Like I said, the next three weeks are crazy and I don't know when I'll be live again, but I will announce them at some point and you'll get your prize, I promise. All right, so if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before, I always do three projects and over on my blog is a PDF that looks like this and it's got all the product information and any measurements usually there aren't any measurements this week because it's pretty straightforward um thank you Janie you guys are distracting me you're being so sweet and I can't focus on what I'm saying because I I'm very touched by the sweet things that you're saying thank you um so the pdf is on my blog pinkbuckaroo.com if you watch if you're watching during the recording I will have hopefully gone up and added that link up here in the video um, we're gonna do three cards all featuring these snowflake showcase products also on here are two classes that I have coming up now these were two add-on classes to the retreat but they are also available as standalone classes um, this one I know I've showed you this before you guys this is the nothing sweeter Christmas treats class I've done a I have done a Christmas treats class every year and this one I love it's super cute it's got six projects all featuring the nothing sweeter um, stamp set and framelits oh well that one went down to the floor um, and this one, even if you're not getting the retreat, you can get this just as a class to go. So uh, let me see if I have my little cheat sheet here. Deadline is November 19th, and I'm going to have them all shipped out by November 27th. However, uh, starting on Monday, I'm going to start cutting this class. And if you've already registered for it, yours will probably ship out when my retreats to go ship out, which is much earlier than the 27th. So if you want this class, and you want it shipped quicker than November 27th, register now this weekend um, so that I can, because I'm going to cut in two phases. I'm going to cut everybody's for the retreat and everybody who's already registered. And then after the retreat, I'll cut all the rest of them. Um, so if you want it shipped quickly, go ahead and register for it. Um, there's four options. $63 is the option for the six make and takes and the bundle. $33 is the option for just the projects. $15 for the PDF and $13 for my team. Um, and you can, if you look at the PDF right here, there's a link right here. And it's at the bottom of every blog post. You can find it. So that's that. And then there's another one, the stamp -a stack the Dashing Deer stamp -a stack You'll have, gosh, now I can't even remember, um, 12 cards, stamp -a stack You'll have a stack of cards. Um, the, da the, the beautiful Dashing Deer bundle. Um, and this one has the same dates on it as the other one, same deal. I'll be cutting everybody who's registered for retreat and registered for the standalone class to go by itself next week, hopefully. I can get that done before I leave. Um, and then we'll ship out early, the week before Thanksgiving or of Thanksgiving. Um, those two can ship together. You can save shipping if you want both of them. When you register for the Dashing Deer class, you'll see there's an option that says ship for free with the Nothing Sweeter class. That's how you save on shipping, okay? Um, so that's that. Okay, let me move these out of the way. Hello, Charlie, he's come in to say hello. UPS man isn't here yet. He'll let us know when he gets here. I don't know why I'm showing you that, I just picked it up. Okay, back to the PDF. Today's project, go over, you'll get PDF, save it, print it, whatever you need to do so you can recreate these projects. And of course, the make and takes I offer free with a minimum $30 order between now and Monday at midnight. Um, and this week's gonna be crucial that you get that in no later than Monday at midnight because Tuesday morning I'm gonna hopefully get those out and get them in the mail Tuesday before I leave. Um, because I want you guys to get these in a timely fashion. This is kind of what they look like. They come in a little packet, everything that you need to make them. 
Um, here's last week's. And if you got last week's, they just went out yesterday. Usually I ship them on Wednesday, but I had to wait for something to come in, um, some ribbon. So they didn't go, they went out a day late. So um, they take about a week to get there. I know sometimes you guys are like, they're not here. It's because it's not priority shipping. It's just first class shipping and it takes about a week, sometimes a little bit longer because it's the post office. Um, so anyway, this is what it looks like. I send you this for free as a thank you for your order. Make sure you use the hostess code. The host code is on the PDF. It's on my blog and it's down here. When I flip the camera, you will see it. All right, I think we're ready to stamp. Let's see if I can make some room. Woo, I'm thirsty, sorry. That was a lot of words. Okay, I'm gonna flip you guys around. You guys, I have to tell you that I have invested in that fancy software, hopefully to make this a little smoother transition. And my sweet team, the Sweet Stampede, they were my guinea pigs this afternoon while I was playing around with it and I'm not proficient enough yet to use it with you guys. I'm too scared. It was glitchy and um, I don't know, it was very glitchy. So we're gonna wait, but just know that I'm working on my technology skills. I want to make this a clean, transition for you so that it's not all crazy and it's not shaking and there aren't wires and <laughs> like that. Hi ladies, thanks for joining me. All right, now the fan is on and let's center this. The fan is on, you guys, it gets super duper hot in here when I am doing this because the lights. So tell me, I know somebody told me last time that the camera was like rolling. So tell me what it looks like if it's, moving I have it on low which should be okay I'm gonna tape everything down what you are looking at are all of the projects that I have done so far with this snowflake showcase I'm calling it snowflake showcase because that's what Stampin' Up was calling it but and it's on the wrong tray over here they all have individual names this, these are snowfall thinlets look at all of them they're beautiful this is snow is glistening which I've been using heavily. And then thanks guys for letting me know. Thanks, Joy. Okay, good. And then this one is Happiness Surrounds, which is the stamp set that is not Christmas or winter related that you can use with your snowflake showcase thinlet. See, like your flowers, it'll cut out your flowers. So it's pretty cool. Stampin' Up's thinking ahead. They listen to us when we say, we need to get more use out of our framelits. They're like, okay, well, we'll design these the snowflakes to be able to use with other things, not just in the winter. So I think that's pretty clever on Stampin' Up's part. So you've got these two stamp sets, you've got the framelits, you've got the trinkets right here. Hi, Christine. Very, very cool. I just got some more today. I was waiting patiently. Um, we could only order one during pre-order and I was dying because I needed some more. Got some more. Um, and then there's velvet paper, which I never pull out to show you. I haven't used it in it. I, I don't know if I show you, it's just gonna look like white paper, but it's flocked. Um, if you've used the, um, the new Santa's workshop paper, it's like that, but it's all flocked. And I just haven't used it, but I will. Okay, so let's look. If this is this month's Stamp Club card. Look away if you're in Stamp Club and you wanna be surprised. Pretty, right? I used the sparkle paper for this giant snowflake. This is the one that is on our blog hop this morning. Um, I did the, a background stamp and then embossed and then there's that like swirly snowflake. And then these were the ones I love so much that we did on Wednesday. Hope you guys liked these. Oh, I just love them. And then this is what we're doing today. All right. So let me pull over my first tray and I want to say that what we're doing is kind of messy. Well, no, I take that back. It's not really messy. It's just a little stepped up, you know, like it's not just paper and ink. We're bringing in some water and using some spritzing. But I think that no matter how long you've been stamping, I think that these are easy to do. These are easy techniques. All right, so we're gonna start here this is the one that we're going to make and then this is the alternate which we'll go back and look at in a second okay all right so we're going to do watercolor paper stampin up has watercolor paper if you haven't seen it in the catalog yep it's there it comes in six by nine sheets and i just cut it in half 
and taped it down to a piece of chipboard. This is backing from, you know, our glimmer paper. And I am using Melon Mambo. And I'm gonna just take one of my blocks to do that. And I'm gonna close it. And then I'm using Daffodil Delight. Uh, that way I've kind of created a little palette for my watercolors. And I won't, you know, I used to squish this here in the lid and then use the lid. But it was getting so messy. And my downline Tammy, I don't know if she's watching, she said, you know, you could use your blocks. And so ever since she told me that, I'm doing it all the time. It's a really great way to um, not make your pad so messy. All right, now this is an aqua painter. If you've never seen an aqua painter, you can see, whoa, I better tighten it up. Look what I just did. Um, it's like a paintbrush marker. The marker part, you untwist it, take it to the sink, and you fill it with water, and then you screw it back on, screw it all the way. <laughs> and then when you squeeze it, it you can see the water's just gonna come down. So it's kind of like a water-loaded paintbrush. All right, so here's my um, watercolor paper. The reason I taped it down is because when it gets wet, it's gonna start to curl, and the tape keeps it down. Um, and I made the paper bigger so that if I, when I pull the tape off, if it tears or whatever, I can cut all that off. You can use painter's tape. I've used washi tape. Um, just whatever you prefer or whatever you have. All right, so like we did on Tuesday, I'm gonna squeeze a bunch of water out and I'm gonna put a generous water wash across my watercolor paper, make it very wet. And then I'm gonna come over here to my Melon Mambo, get it nice and loaded, and then I'm just gonna kind of touch my water. See how it's just kind of sp spreading around? And I'm gonna squeeze the water out of my brush every now and then. And then I'm gonna pick up some Daffodil Delight, drop it into more down here. I want them to mix, but I definitely want there to be a, you know, yellow down on one side, more pink on the other, kind of an ombre. And they mix together and make kind of a corally color. All right, so you can, I'm continuing to just kind of squeeze and dab and dot, and it's gonna look different every time you do it. Lots of water, that's the key, lots and lots of water, okay? All right, so now once you've got it the way you like it, then you can stop, make sure you clean that out. You can also run that over to the sink and, and um, rinse it out. Then, here comes my favorite part. Grab your kosher salt. And you're just gonna sprinkle that on to the watercolor, okay? And it's gonna immediately kind of soak in that water and it creates kind of like fireworks, little, little shooting, you know, texture on your watercolor. So you're gonna let it dry. You're gonna sprinkle that and let it dry. You can also use regular salt. It creates a different look. I really like the way the chunky salt looks. If you didn't see, these are big salt crystals. And you're gonna set it aside to dry. Now, like we did on two or Wednesday, I have one already done. And look, you can see how that yellow and um, pink blended together to make that peachy orangey color. This is a really cool effect and it is super easy, Christine. Hi, Belinda. Now you just take your salt and rub it all off. Get it all off. I'm gonna come over here and dump it in the trash can. This is a fun technique and I find that once I start it, then I just wanna make like a thousand of them. Isn't that awesome? All right, so pull off your tape. We're gonna do it again in a little while in the next project with Gorgeous Grape. All right, so this, remember, we've made the paper bigger than it needs to be. And let's see if I can find my paper trimmer. And we're gonna cut it down to four inches by five and a fourth, okay? So, I kinda like this showing here on the edge, so I'm gonna not cut all of that off. All right, I may need to cut more of it off. Y'all don't judge my paper trimmer. I honestly only use it when I'm making a video because I like the, you know, the guillotine choppers, a chop, you know, you know what I'm talking about, and that's what I use. But Stamina doesn't offer one of those, so I'm showing you our paper trimmer because it is a great paper trimmer for those of you who are 
just starting out or who are looking for this kind of paper trimmer. All right, so there we go. Ooh, I like it. Now, something else I did, and I think I left this off the PDF. I rounded these corners, but I only rounded two of them. This is our triple decorative Ed. <laughs> it's this punch. Why can't I think of the name? Where's my PDF? I don't know. And I'm just going to punch two opposite corners. It's cool. It, it rounds your corners. It can put that little decorative thing there. And a punch is a hole. So it's great. It's a really great punch. All right, so I just did two just to kind of, I don't know, make it a little different. There's two pointy ones and two rounded ones. All right, so let's get our card base. Oh, I didn't bring over any of my adhesive or scissors. By the way, you guys, this was another thing I was gonna tell you. My, so I told you I'm leaving. I've got a thousand things to do for the retreat. Plus I have a team meeting. Plus I've got things to do for on stage. And it's my daughter's birthday party in the morning. And my nephew's coming to stay with us this afternoon. So with all that said, I am a little stretched. So I did not, I, I'm putting dimensionals on the back of this, by the way. And see what I'm doing? I'm using up the rest of my dimensionals. I did not record clean recordings of this. I hate that. I haven't done that for you guys. But I just had to cut a few things this week, and that was one of them. So I, I'm sorry. I hope you guys understand um, that I'm a little bit cuckoo, and I just had to cut a couple things out. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Okay, so just so that you know, there. if you go over to YouTube, you won't find a clean recording of this. All right, so let's cut some framelits, some snowflakes. Um, now this is an intricate die. We've talked about that. We've talked about um, when you use an intricate die, it needs a lot more pressure and it has all these little doodads that need to be cut. And so Stampin' Up! has a precision base plate, which I'm gonna pull out. I don't always use it because I prefer, you guys have seen me use the dryer sheet. And the dryer sheet is great because it holds all the little doodads in place, especially when you're mass producing and you don't want to use your brush on 80 <laughs> um, Christmas trees or whatever. But I'm gonna show you today, this is the precision base plate. You, It's thin, you put it on um, your regular platform. And, oh, we're gonna do both. The This is the largest snowflake and then the medium snowflake. And we're gonna run it through. And just think about all those little doodads, those little ovals, those little circles, all of those are cutting edges and they all need to cut. So you want to give it you know, a little extra push as you go through there. Run it through a few times and and make sure it's gotten enough, you know, pressure to go through there. It's not just, it's not like cutting just a circle. You know, circle, one swipe through and you're good. It's more complicated than that. Um, so we're gonna pull this off and it might just come out. There we go. And so, so you can see all the little doodads still sticking in there because we didn't use a dryer sheet, but that's okay. I've, we've had, I've had a, lot of, a lot of questions about the dryer sheet. Um, it does not, it has never ruined my framelits, and I do like it, but this is just another option. Now check this out. Do you see this? This just happened today. This is the um, dye brush with the little foam mat that comes with it. My big shot was sitting on it and I went to pull it out. <laughs> Oops, so it wasn't the rabbit, it was the big shot. All right, so the die brush you can see easily gets those out too. So if you're just making one of these cards, easy peasy. Now if you're making 500, you might get tired. But I don't think I'd choose this for a card where I was making 500. All right, so now let's get, let's get this stuff together. I'm going to take, this is the silver thread, ooh, and it's kind of twisted up, but before I put it down, I'm actually going to open some new dimensionals. 
because we're going to put a dimensional down. Can you use a dryer sheet with that plate? What I find, Shelby, is that no, it cuts through the dryer sheet. It doesn't work. Um, it's too much pressure there. Good question. This actually needs to go higher. All right, dimensional, silver thread, four fingers, and wrap, wrap, wrap as many times as you want. Okay, scissors right here. And then I'm just gonna take it. Sometimes I make a figure eight, but this time I'm just gonna kind of push it down into that dimensional. I hope you guys can see this. Oops, I don't need that one. It's, uh, I want it to be kind of messy. And I'm just gonna kind of go around, pressing the little ends like that. You guys see that? All right, then I'm gonna get my snowflake, which I forgot. We gotta spritz it. We gotta spritz it. This is spritzer filled with al rubbing alcohol and a few dots of frost white shimmer paint. And I'm just gonna spritz a couple times, give it just like literally like 30 seconds to dry. And it'll be dry. If you guys didn't watch on Wednesday, I accidentally spritz my my dye sheet. <laughs> Oops, kind of sparkly. That's all right. All right, let's get another dimensional because we touched that one a whole lot and it's not very sticky anymore. I'm gonna put another one on top of it, which sandwiches those little threads in. And I'm gonna put that there. Then I'm not, that's too many dimensionals, I think. So I'm not gonna add another one. Well, no, let's see. Do I want to? Nope. I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive right here in the middle because we're gonna cover that up. And I'm gonna put that medium one right there. Yeah, Vicki, my, <laughs> my rabbit has gotten a hold of quite a few things in this house, but no, that was my fault. All right, now we're gonna take one of these snowflake trinkets. And now the snowflake trinket I have found has a little rhinestone in the middle and then in the back side, it's plain. So you can decide which you wanna, I need my scissors, which you, which side you like better. And I'm gonna put this snowflake up a little bit, not in the center, just up a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the sentiment and do smoky slate. I wanted the sentiment to be kind of soft. That's why I went with smoky slate. And my photopolymer stamp is stained uh, red because I've used it so much and that's what happens when you use your photopolymers a lot. It's okay. Still works just fine. And paper trimmer is right here. All right, so just on the whisper white scrap. And there we go. And nothing fancy. I'm gonna just cut these at an angle like this. And we're gonna put it right there, overlapping half of that snowflake, all right? So that's it. Not too difficult, right, you guys? That salt technique really makes you look like you're like amazing, like you're a magician, like you're a super fancy artist. But you saw how easy it was, right? I mean, a kindergartner could do that. I love it. In fact, when my daughter was in kindergarten, that's how we made her, she had to do a big, display at Valentine's Day, a big heart, and that's exactly what we did. Salt and watercolor. Now, let's look at that other card. Look at this one, though. You can see just the difference. They're ne you're, it's never gonna look the same. Um, the colors, it's always gonna be different, which is fine. Now, this one is a little bit different. Let's see, where should I put these? Over here. Um, I cut the, the watercolor paper down to three and three-fourths by five, rounded all four circles. And I cut out different snowflakes instead of the big ones. And I, I can tell I spritzed the whole thing with, with that spritz to add a little shimmer. And um, anyways, that's just a different take on it. If you wanted to do your whole piece of, of watercolor paper like we did on Wednesday, you could do that and then cut it in half and do one like that and one like that. Ta-da! I hope you like it. All right, let me move this all this stuff out of the way and we will move on to the next project, which is somewhat similar in that we're gonna make that same kind of background. 
Let's see, what colors do I need to stay here? Melon Mambo. And I am happy to have been playing with non-holiday colors for a change. I know we're in the, you know, all the, the fall colors and then change it over to Christmas colors. And I do like traditional Christmas colors, but it was a nice change. All right, so here's the next one. We're gonna make kind of like a window with the snowflakes and we're gonna do the same thing with this background, okay? So watercolor paper cut in half. And in fact, this one looks a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We're gonna take Gorgeous Grape and, and by the way, you guys, um, all you have to do here, where did I put my paper towel? All you have to do um, with those blocks is just go rinse them in the sink. You might do a little bit of dish soap on them and then they're clean. So don't worry about ruining your clear blocks. You're not going to with this, with this, um, with this ink like this. All right, so a full watercolor wash. Make it nice and wet and juicy. And then just start dropping that color. Every now and then I squeeze more water as I go. Okay. And I want it darker in some places, lighter in others. Lots and lots of drop, 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 dropping the paint. You can take it also and just kind of run it around, get it mixing. All right. I'm squeezing, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Add more water. Remember, water is your friend. Um, you know, one thing you can do is dry these if you're impatient, is dry these with the heat tool. However, I find that when they dry naturally, doing the salt again, the kosher salt, I find that when they dry naturally, they're much prettier than if you try, try to dry it with a heat tool. These little puddles and really cool texture marks um, are created when you let them dry naturally. All right, so look, here's the one I did earlier. Let's get all the salt off. Ooh, this one's neat. It kind of cracked in some places, which is cool. All right, let me dump the salt. Pull it off here. And ta-da! All right, we're gonna cut this one down this time. Remember, I didn't put measurements on the PDF today because it was pretty straightforward, but this one is three and three-fourths by five. All right, so let's do three and three-fourths. Yeah, the purple is really pretty. You know, these are kind of wintry color. Well, I don't know, wintry colors, but in my mind, they're, they're wintry colors. All right, let's see, did I, did I measure it right? Three and three-fourths by five, okay. Now this time, if I can find my punch, we're gonna round all four corners. And we're gonna adhere it to a whisper white card base just like we did the other one. What, do I not have a whisper white card base? What happened? Hold please. Oh, here it is, right here. No, that's the other one. Ah, right, guys, hold on just a second. Hmm. I don't know what happened. I know I cut it. See, this is the what happens when I um, record these clean versions for you guys. I do them in the morning, so anything that I'm missing, I can take care of it behind the scenes, and you never know. But today, you're catching the real me. <laughs> okay, there's our Whisper White Thick Whisper White card base. And I'm going to put this on with four dimensionals. Hi, Robin. Um, Carla, nope, the thick Whisper White. Yep, thick Whisper White for your card bases makes a huge difference. All right, so there we go, we've got that. Now let's make the little window. And I'm gonna bring my big shot back over, but we're gonna go back to the magnetic platform. And I've already cut out the snowflakes, but we're gonna make the little, the little frames. And in fact, let me move this back just for a second. One of the frames is going to be scalloped and one of them is going to be just a regular uh, square. And I'm going to stick those snowflakes on the back of it. So because I thought of it ahead of time, this only works if you think of it about it ahead of time. I'm going to put 
the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back, okay? I love these multi-purpose adhesive sheets. I just can't always remember to put the adhesive on before I cut. I don't know, you guys like that? Okay, so there. So now it's like a sticker, basically. When I peel it off, it's gonna be like a sticker. All right, back over here. Oh, my desk was so clean a little while ago. Now I've got, you know what, I'm gonna tell you the measurements of these squares. This one is two and seven eighths. The outside one is two and seven eighths, and the inside one is, oh, like two and three eighths. All right, so we're just gonna make a frame. Just like that. Don't breathe, we don't want them to move. Ah, it moved. My my clear plate is curved, it's got a, it's kind of warped, so I may need to put a post-it note. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, there we go. The magnetic plate does hold them in place when you haven't ruined your <laughs> clear plate. All right, so we're gonna keep this part. Now before we put it back, we're gonna get another piece and we're gonna take the small one and a scalloped one. And this scalloped one is two and, no, three, right about three, okay? So scalloped square and the smaller square. Ah. Come on, work with me here, work with me. Today my daughter is riding her bike home so I don't have to rush. <laughs> but I do have to go back up to school. Today they had something called Pioneer Day and I had to make cream corn for their barbecue lunch. So I have to go up and get my crock pot. All right, so there's that frame. All right, now, Let's see, remember we, when we did this part, we made it sticky. So I'm gonna peel off the sticky, if I can get it to come off. Peel off the sticky. Okay, now I have cut four snowflakes and I'm going to just, whoops, I'm gonna lay them down here on the sticky on the back side. You guys see what I'm doing here? That way, I didn't have to worry about adhesive and trying to get it to dry and it's slipping and that way it's already sticky. Stick that on there. All right, so now we've got our snowflakes, but we want them to be outside the window. So take your scissors and just cut those off along the straight edge. I love those multi-purpose adhesive sheets when I can remember to use them. They are awesome. There, okay, oh goodness, look at that you guys. This is why you don't leave your ink pad open. I set my scissors in that ink pad. Good thing I noticed it before I used them. All right, now we've got this little um, frame and we're gonna take our many dimensionals and one in each corner. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah is a technique girl. She does lots of fun, messy, artsy kind of cards that are beautiful. Let's see, four mini dimensionals in each corner. Come on, good night. There we go. And we're gonna put it right, oh no, oh no, hold on, let me get you straight, right on those corners. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm all thumbs today, what is happening? Come on, all right, slowly but surely, I'm attaching it to that scallop square. So cute, right? So cute. All right, now we're going to put it right there. And of course, we're going to put some more dimensionals because why wouldn't we? We want to pay extra postage to ship this. It's worth it. I think it's worth it. Okay. 
and we'll put it right there. All right, now I got to this point of the card and then I just didn't know what else to do. Literally, I froze. Have you guys ever done that where you like part of your card and you don't know what to do? So it sat on my desk for a while and I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it and I added, really I didn't get it too fancy. I just, I'm gonna add one stamped snowflake and let's see, is this, yep. And the sentiment, same one from last time I think, yep. Same one, so let's bring the Big Shot back over. Wouldn't it be nice if I could be organized and do all my Big Shot work at once so I didn't have to keep bringing it back and forth, back and forth. Yes, Sarah, I know. I. <laughs> it's funny how we do that to ourselves. Like we're so excited, I was so excited, I had this idea and then I got to it and I loved it and then I was like, and now what? But I find that if I just walk away from it, for a day or two days or three days or an hour or whatever. Here's our snowflake, our one snowflake that we're gonna use. Then usually something will come to me. But I, if I try to force myself to think of something, then nothing ever comes. I have to let it, let it percolate. All right, now let's get that piece and cut that off. And we're gonna make this three and three fourths so let's cut it. No specific measurements on this, just it's three and three fourths wide because that's what our watercolor paper is. And then just kind of as tall as the words, if that makes sense. Little fast fuse, come down a little bit like that. And then of course, we gotta put another Dimensional, because we're already paying extra postage, so we might as well put as many dimensionals as we want. Put that guy right there, and last but not least, a little bow. And this bow won't add in much more bulk, but it doesn't matter, because we're already paying extra postage for all those dimensionals, right? <laughs> you know what, I don't even buy regular stamps anymore. I just buy the non-machinable stamps. The, I think they're 72 cents, because everything I, Everything I make needs extra postage, and that's okay. All right, thanks, Ree. I appreciate you sharing the video. All right, a little little thing there, a little bow there, and we are done with card number two. What do you guys think? Again, an easy technique, but you know, I think it has pretty big wow factor, if I say so myself, in my opinion. All right, we're gonna do one more, but this one does not have watercoloring. We're gonna, let me clean just a tiny bit, get everything out of the way. Grab what we need. This next card, however, does have heat embossing, which has great big wow factor. All right, let's clean up, because nobody wants to look at a mess. Today, my office, my studio, the room where I work, was so messy that I was just kind of like in walking in circles and I had to stop, spend about half an hour and just organize and it made a huge difference. All right, here we go, the last card. We're gonna do several things here. Um, let's start with, we did this last week with the embossing um, mat. The emboss embossing mat, this is new in the annual catalog. We're gonna use this new, I mean this big framelit, the big, snowflake framelit and we're going to emboss it kind of over on the side all right so guess what i'm getting back over here the big shot but let me grab i need some washi tape to hold it in place all right we're switching around plates a bunch today aren't we all right so take off your magnetic platform and grab your multi-purpose platform this is the one that comes with your big shot and you're gonna lay your, I have a smudge here, but we're not gonna worry about it because it's gonna be on the back. Lay your framelit upside down. Let me think, Am I? do I need the clear plate? I can't remember. I think I need the clear plate. I can't remember, suddenly I'm having a, let me see. Yeah, okay, clear plate, multi-purpose platform, clear plate. Your framelit, not with a cutting side down, but with a cutting side up. 
and I want it kind of off the paper a little bit. Can you guys see that? I want it off centered. So I'm gonna put the paper there and you know what, do I even need to, well, we'll put a, just a tiny little, little tiny piece of washi to keep it in place like that, okay? Lay it down, take this blue, the light blue, which picks up a ton of lint, by the way. I don't know if you guys who have yours, does yours look like that, look like that? It's very linty. Um, this is the skinny blue one. I don't really know what the other one is for. I guess I should figure that out, but shh. Use a skinny one here. Then this is the, the regular platform that comes with it and put on top. And we're gonna run it through. And it's gonna feel like it's doing nothing but that's okay because we don't want it to squeeze tight, otherwise it would cut it. But no, look. Ooh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. It's so fancy. This is how I talk to myself when I'm by myself. I forget you guys are there. All right, we're gonna need that in a little while, but not right now. Okay, let's put this on. Of course, bring the dimensionals since we've already purchased the expensive postage and we're going to take this and we're just going white on white we're going to put it on a white whisper white thick card base you guys are quiet today so quiet thank you for all the wows and shares and yes thank you debbie you just got out of bed must be nice must be okay so we've put it on a whisper white card base there we go now let's do let's see what do i want to do first hmm, let's do our heat emboss all right we're going to emboss this beautiful snowflake or tree that's made of snowflakes we're going to emboss it in white embossing powder on melon mambo because you know we're going with a theme today springy colors pinks and purples and yellows. I'm rubbing it really good with my embossing buddy, which helps to remove that static electricity, which holds all your embossing crystals in places that you don't want it. So you rub it with that embossing buddy, ink it up in Versamark, and press real good. It's a big stamp, so make sure you get lots of pressure can't see anything right where is it I know hold on you'll see it's like the sticky it's like um it's an ink that's very sticky and when you sprinkle your embossing powder ta-da it sticks to it but we're not done we are not done and I keep my embossing powder in a little <laughs> Christine that's funny um I keep my embossing powder in just a little little you know a Tupperware deal. What do you call those? A little Sterilite from TJ Maxx. All right, heat tool, heat it up. You'll see it go from powdery to shiny, and that's when you know that you have hit the right temperature. The heat tool takes about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds to hit the right temperature, and as soon as it does, you'll see everything goes shiny. And it's still exciting after all these years. I've probably been heat embossing for 20 years and I still get excited when I see it. I also still almost burn my fingertips. You gotta hold your fingers away from the heat because it is not like a hairdryer. It's hotter. All right, good, so there we've got that. Very good. Now we need to stamp some snowflakes. And this stamp set has lots of different little snowflakes. I've been using them, I think today I've used these two. Um, the other day I used that tiny one, it's so cute. Um, so we're gonna stamp the snowflake in Melon Mambo. And of course I left the other one on the other tray. Didn't I? No, where did it go? Did I not pull it out? There's that one. Hmm, is it still in here? Maybe I didn't pull it. Oh, I did. Oh, no, here it is. All right, that's all right. Melon Mambo on Whisper White. Sorcery. <laughs> Cindy, yes, I like that. It's sorcery. That sounds like something my husband would say. 
All right. Now, unfortunately, our Christmas tree does not have a framelit. Gasp. <gasps> We're going to have to cut it. But we can use a paper trimmer for that. Okay, so now find the framelits that match your snowflakes. There's that guy. And then, let's see, I think maybe it's this guy right here. And if you're using your magnetic platform with your clear plates that are not bent up, <laughs> then it'll hold it in place. Ta-da! There we go. Gosh, that almost looked red for a minute. My eyes are deceiving me. All right, we are done with Mr. Big Shot today. I can put him down. We do need that paper trimmer, however, to cut this beautiful Christmas tree. Patty, I saw what you said, that's so funny. You keep changing your mind about Christmas cards. You know what? I find that by the time it's time for Christmas cards, I've made so many that I don't need to make any. You know, I mean, they're not all gonna be the same, but boy, I got a bunch of Christmas cards. Let's see, we're gonna just cut it so that it's a triangle, nothing fancy. How many of you are going to get this snowflake showcase? Oops, or, or already have gotten it. Do you love it? You know, when I first saw it, I thought, hmm, all right. But then, when I started playing with it, I was quite enamored. It is beautiful, it really is. It's very, very different than, um, and we do have another snowflake. Um, why didn't I cut that? We do have another snowflake set in the, in the holiday catalog, which is nice also. Um, but this one, I think just the variety of snowflake shapes and the number and that big one, that big snowflake is just really beautiful. Christine, you already got it. Sarah, I know you have it. Sarah's used, used it and loves it. Joy, you have it. Yes, beautiful. It's just beautiful and it's fun. All right. And you know, after Christmas, when it's yucky January, this is that sparkle glimmer paper. This is from the Brights DSP stack. I start talking and I don't tell you guys what I'm doing. Um, this is just one by four. Again, I didn't put that on the PDF, but it's one by four. And this is like a fourth by, I don't know, four. Um, I don't know, I was saying something. Oh, I know, and you know, after Christmas, when it's ugly, January, yucky, you can still use snowflakes and make these bright, beautiful cards that would really kind of brighten anybody's day. All right, that looks like I cut it a little bit crooked, but we're going with it. All right, dimensionals, of course. Oh, good, Christine, then I have, I have done my job. My job here is done. She says she wasn't gonna get it, but now, you know what, look, that's, that's the, I used a bigger one here. Hmm, I don't know. I'm, it'll still work. It will still work. All right. I think this one needs a little baby dimensional. Carol, you got it too. Carla, you think you're only getting the other stamp set. The other stamp set, which I really haven't played with much, is... You know what? I forgot to put something on this card. We'll come back to it. Um, <laughs> woo! Sorry. Um, the other stamp set, yes. And you know what? I haven't really even played with it very much. Um, and it is awesome. I've seen some beautiful designs out there with it. I just, I, I'm in the, you know, holiday winter mode. And I, I, I don't know. I haven't played with it, but you're right. It is beautiful. A few basic rhinestones. Oh, no. What did I do? Look, you guys. I forgot to stamp the joy. And if I stamp it now, we have a dimensional there. You know it's gonna happen. Yeah. Hmm, let's see. Do I dare? Let's see if I can get the dimensional off. How many times have I have I done this? And how many times have I tried to stamp on something that was that had a dimensional? <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one. It doesn't work. No matter how good a stamper you are, trying to stamp on a dimensional never works. But I think we got it. All right, the joy I'm doing in Memento. 
let's see. Yeah. All right. Well, it'll do. It's a little bit low. Okay. So there's that card. Let's look at this one. This one's better. Man, I'm going to have to figure something out there. All right. So we'll look at them like that. So pretty. I love that tree. I love the snowflakes. And look how fun that big snowflake is embossed. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I like it. I love it. I forgot something on the first card. Can we go back? Can we go back and fix it? The frosted, totally forgot. Maybe you guys were yelling at me and I wasn't listening. These are not rhinestones right here. These are frosted, they're called, okay, let's see if I can remember, frosted and clear epoxy drops. That's what they're called. And look, you can color them with your blends and they change colors. Awesome. But I'm just going to use the frosted ones, just a few. They are a little pricey. I will, I will say that, but, but look, I mean, I've used a ton of them because I like them. All right. So just a few, just a few. And there we go. <laughs> I told you guys I was kind of cuckoo today, but I think we got three fun projects done and hopefully you like them. Okay, let's look. Let's review. We have these two with an alternative and we had the Christmas tree and then we had the beautiful, gorgeous grape. All right, you guys, don't forget Snowflake Showcase right here. Um, we've got the dies. We've got the two stamp sets. Here's the other one and the trinkets which are gone, and the frosted paper. It is available in November only, and they're saying while well, supplies last. So things that usually sell out first are those embellishments, followed after by the framelits. That would be my projection. So if you love these, you need to get them this week. You need to get them quickly. Um, stamp sets are made in-house, so I don't think they, well, I don't know. I'm, I don't, can't speak for stamping up, but I would think that if they ran out of stamp set, they could make more, but they cannot make more framelits and they cannot make more trinkets. So if you love them, get them now. Um, I highly recommend the framelit. If I had to pick something out of all of it, it would be the framelits. They're gorgeous. They're amazing. And um, I think you'll get a lot of use out of them. And um, so till November 30th. And if you want these make and takes for free, make sure you get your order in by Monday at midnight using this host code. Um, and if your order is over $150, don't worry about using the host code. I will see your order. I want you to get the, I want you to get the Stampin' Rewards. If your order is over $150, you are going to get Stampin' Rewards. I want you to get those. Um, but I will still send you the make and takes. Um, but if your order is under $150, use that host code. I am going to get these out before I go to Orlando. And I think that's it. Here's the PDF. Don't forget to go get it. Don't forget the classes. Message me if you want to get on the holiday retreat waiting list. And that's it. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks for being patient with me today. Thanks for joining me. And I don't know when I'll see you again, but I'll see you in the next couple weeks at some point. Make sure you're watching the Facebook group for announcements from on stage. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Bye.